Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship, and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. I'm so happy to have you guys with me tonight. We are going to have a fabulous show. For those of you who are brand new to the Pleasure Zone, you are in for a treat. We are actually talking about one of the fundamental things that has to do with sex, with sexuality, with biology. And it's um, actually, it came out of as a result of I was listening to an audio book called Come As You Are. Um, I will get the name of that author for you shortly during break. I didn't even think about getting that up um, on my screen so I could look at that. But it is a fabulous book, Come As You Are. I have it on my audiobooks. And um, I just thought it was such a poignant message that the author was putting out that said, all of us have essentially the same genitals just organized different. And I thought that is such a freaking powerful statement. And it's true, biologically correct, that especially in the way that our bodies are formed um, embryonically, I think it's amazing. So I'm excited to share this because in this book, Come As You Are, uh, I'm going to be mentioning it about 100 times because I think it's a fabulous book. The author is Emily Nagoski. She's a PhD. She works, um, she lectures at a university, but she also lectures uh, all over the place and she has her own private practice. So really, really uh, amazing human being with phenomenal research behind her work. And Um, She's gathered information from everywhere. So I am sharing uh, sort of a synopsis of what I gathered from her book, which was something that I knew, but I think the way that she worded it really just made me go, this is so important to share with people because I think what happens is we start to get into weird judgments um, of each other, of ourselves. And really, when we have this bit of information, there can be no judgment, I think. So I'm sharing this information with you all about genitals, all about how we have basically exactly the same goods, just organized different. And we're going to go through some parts of the body so you can understand that. I'm also in this episode going to be talking about my own personal hypothesis on what this might mean uh, from a political standpoint, from a social perspective, socio-political kind of um, take on this as well. So uh, I do have some ideas of what this could mean. If we all understood this, what could this mean? And uh, what could that mean moving forward? And I also want to give you guys some tools uh, at the very end of the show, so stick around for the whole show for sure, give you some tools so you can move out of uh, judgment of your own genitals because maybe you think they're too this or too that or you think they're not perfect because maybe you're comparing them to porn stars. We're going to kind of eliminate all that nonsense. And I think having some fundamentals of biology are key. Why? Because I love talking about things, um, especially that even though biology can sound maybe boring to you guys, I think that anybody who normally gets bored by biology will probably get really excited about this conversation if you're even slightly a horny, kinky kind of person who's interested in bodies and interested in um, sex organs and reproductive systems. Um, And that's not everybody, but it is anybody who's actually interested in that, right? So not everybody, that's not everybody's shtick. So I am not going to say it's for everybody in the world, but this is definitely a fun conversation and can get things um, grooving and interesting on the biological level. For those of you who have no idea who I am, my name is Milica Jelanić, and I am a holistic health practitioner as well as a sex and intimacy coach. I have been 
the host of the Pleasure Zone for over eight years, with over eight uh, with over 360 or 370 episodes available for you to find uh, via podcast um, or more. 380. I don't know. We calculated it the other day. I know that coming by the end of January of 2023, this I will be at my 400th episode. So I do know that. Anyhow. I'm very excited for all of that, and I'm excited for you guys to check out my work. If you head over to my website, melitzajelinek.com, um, if after listening to this episode you find me intriguing, interesting, and you might want to connect with me, by all means, head over to my website, melitzajelinek.com, book a time with me. You can find the Book Now link on uh, the bottom of my page, and you can book a 15-minute session with me. If you want to book more time, 15 minutes, I will gift you uh, more time than that. I do charge for that. So feel free, though, if you would like to get on a call and just see if I work, uh, if you feel like I would work well for you as a sex and intimacy coach, I would love to talk to you about that. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's talk about genitals and how fun genitals are and how essentially we all have the same genitals organized different. And isn't that just like I'm just going to say that a few more times until you really get how true that is. So how do we know this? So when we look at um, embryos in, you know, in their growth stages, there are some fundamentally similar things in embryos before we have the, before we're able to have sex determination. And I want to be really clear on this. Sex is not the same as gender. So for anybody listening who feels like I'm not including them in this, um, the the information I'll be sharing will refer to sex, which is how we are identified by our genitals. So we'll be referring to male, female, and intersex. Those are the three biological sexes that um, are discussed usually medically. And then gender is an identity that people will identify as, which could be um, boy, girl, like we know there are many genders. So this is not a conversation about genders. This is truly about anatomy, biology. We're looking at um, some fundamentals that way. So um, in reference, I'll be referring to things in uh, more of the scientific term of male, female, rather than man, woman, because that is not the same. So female, male, and intersex will be my terms for today. I just wanted to give you guys that understanding um, and layout so you understand what I'm talking about. So if you don't know what intersex is, if this is a totally new term to you, I have done some shows about this. Intersex is a term that is being used more and more frequently as um, as more and more doctors around the world are not doing um, as many surgeries on babies right when they're born to uh, make them into whatever the doctor feels is the predominant sex organs that are showing. So people are now allowed to be living as intersex. It, there are different reports. Some reports say that it's 2% of the population. Some say that it's 0.02% of the population. We don't actually really know for sure because a lot of people have had um, operations. So we can't really tell for sure. Now, we do know that there's a lot of people who are going back and uh, going to the doctors and going, wait a second, did you do surgery on me? So there, I know there's been some some lawsuits around that. Uh, so intersex would be where there is no uh, no clear uh, distinction between male or female genitalia at birth. So the person is identified as intersex. Okay. So why does that even matter? And I know that some people will get highly offended that I'm even talking about intersex. But I know there are a lot of religious people out there who think this is some kind of uh, sign of the devil or something. It's not. It's been around for thousands of years. It is something that is a matter of fact in in um, nature. It's not just in humans. It also occurs in, in different um, different species. Well, so we are going to be talking about the different, so I'm just going to start with the embryological precursor. We're going to be discussing male and female genitalia and the different things internally, externally, things we can see, things we don't see. 
and some some of them for female are things we don't see and for some of them for male we do see etc cetera, etc cetera. so okay we're going to get some of that out of the way and so for intersex there may be um a combination of these showing as well so discuss a little bit about how and why that occurs as well so i want to you guys just be aware that like as we are in you know when we're in embryonic form and we're you know hanging out and developing in utero or you know um as far as i know we're all developing in utero unless there are some like full fully formed people who are being formed outside of utero that i'm not aware of these tests i want to leave you guys out in case that's happening too um one of the things that we know like say for example you have twins you might have fraternal twins where there's a a male and a female twin very um, identified at birth as male and female they will say for example when they're growing in utero they're going to have some very distinct features that start to show up, right? So their fingers, their toes, their body, they're all going to be developing their internal organs and yada, yada. And then if you do have fraternal twins, male and female, there starts to become some distinctions that give them more of their own um, features, right? Maybe one's nose is bigger than the other one's nose. And then all of a sudden, um, at a certain stage in growth, we start to develop and it all depends on which chromosomes you get, we start to develop different genitals. And this is how, you know, the parents will go, oh, that's a boy, that's a girl. That, that again, is more of a gender term, but we're going to go, that's a male and that's a female, because that's the scientific uh, terms and that's the sex. So as we're forming in utero, these things are forming, we could be in exactly the same uterus as our twin, and all of a sudden, your genitals are slightly different. Now, that can even be true if you have two, if you have fraternal twins that are two female twins. They're, they could have very distinctly different genitals as well. One might have bigger labia than the other. You know, those are all very like everything to a certain point will look very similar in terms of development um you know and sometimes even certain things that are more anomalous like maybe missing finger that could also be something that shows up for more than one of the twins i'm just using twins as an example because you know i want you to get the idea that you know these people are developing at exactly the same time and at a certain point there is a shift that happens and genitals start to appear, which actually gives us what we will call the male, female, or intersex sexual sex identities. So these are sex identities that are scientific terms that doctors use to say if you are male, female, or intersex. These are all determined by what a doctor sees visually from the outside. So I say that because sometimes uh, at a certain stage also in development, you know, puberty, pre-puberty or anything like that, certain things can start to shift where somebody may have actually lived their life fully appearing what we'll call female uh, with female genitalia according to uh, medicine. And then all of a sudden, there's a shift. And then wait a second, there's maybe the growth of what appears to be a penis, or maybe there's the dropping of what appears to be testicles. This happens. And I don't have stats on how often it happens, but I do know that it happens. So whether that occurs when you're in utero or whether that occurs out of utero, these things do and can shift and change in life. So what we want to talk about, though, so we we know that there are differences because we look at them and we go, that's not the same as that. But you can also look at, say, for example, 10 different vulvas, and they'll look completely different. They might have different colors of labia minora. So that's the little inside lips, if you're not sure what, <laughs> what the terminology is. It's the little lips, like the petals, we'll call it. And then the labia 
that's the labia minora. The labia majora are more of like the the ones on the outside, the bigger lips, right? So, so those are kind of akin biologically to um, like the scrotal sac and the male uh, testes. But we're going to get into that. We're going to kind of discuss some of the diff the similar. Uh, they, like uh, biologically, they have, and anatomically, they're they're going to have the same tissues as part of uh, how they're formed. So they're they. It's just fascinating how they're all so so similar. Oh my goodness, we're already at the 15 minute point, and I'm already uh, at my break. So we are going to head to our first commercial break uh, right now. Actually, <laughs> you are listening to the Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Milica Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly, other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email. Info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. For those of you listening tonight, you may have a little bit of interest in biology. You may have a curiosity about genitals. You may just have a fascination with being alive and being human and wondering what does it mean and what are these things about genitals what do they signify? Like, what does it mean to have female genitals and male genitals or intersex genitals? What have we made super significant about that? And how is it that we've confused sex and gender for so long, like forever? Like, how have we done that? And then how have we confused even gender and sexuality? Like, these things have been confused for a very long time. Uh, that's a whole other ballgame, but tonight we're going to be talking about genitals specifically and how they're actually all pretty much the same embryonically, and then they start to change as we develop, right? So just a really cool thing to to have awareness of. And so for those of you who are new to this show and you're just tuning in right now, uh, my name is Milica Yelenich and I'm a sex and intimacy coach. I work with people who are totally interested in having more pleasure in their life. I also am a holistic health practitioner, and I use some really highly innovative ways to get you back on track with your health, especially I like to work with people who feel like the system has failed them. By the system, I mean the medical system. They're looking for answers, and I usually get people who show up who say, I've tried everything, and I'm like, but have you tried me? And they haven't, so I am... I am that person, but I like to be the person who is not the last person on your list as well. So I do like to work with people, um, helping them to do different things like getting them to just do maintenance and look after themselves uh, on a regular basis and getting them on track so they understand um, and are both educated in their health and are a participant in their health. 
So if you sound, if that sounds like totally fun and interesting to you and you'd like to connect with me, head over to my website at milicajelenich.com. That's M-I-L-I-C-A-J-E-L-E-N-I-C.com. And you can go down on my webpage to the bottom and book now if you like. And you can also, if you're, while you're there, you can pick up my free uh, do's, don'ts, and maybes list just for fun, something to go through. I refer to that a lot on my shows, and the do's, don'ts, and maybes list is a really great way to know what it is that you are okay with when it comes to sex. There's some, there's a list of some pretty vanilla type sex on there, but some of them too can be maybe some things you never thought of. It could spice up your life. All right, so let's get back to this episode and everything we're talking about today when it comes to your genitals and how they just happen to be pretty much the same as everybody else's, just organized different. So now that you know that, wait a second, your genitals are just like everybody else's, but organized different. Can you, let's just for now, just for this segment, stop judging your genitals about one to 2% less than you were judging them before. Okay, well, let's just start with that, and then we're going to move on with the rest of the show. Maybe by the end of the show, we'll get to like 40% less judgment of your genitals about how they look, smell, how they're organized, how you got a big this or a small that or whatever you think is so right or so wrong about them. We'll move our way through that, and then we're going to be able to realize that, hey, we're essentially all got the same goods. So how do, what is the term for that? Scientifically, that's actually called homologous. So homologous traits are traits that have the same biological, for example, traits that have the same biological organs, but they have different functions. Uh, one of the most easy examples that uh, comes up with homologous structures in the body are, uh, are, for example, the penis and the clitoris. They're homologous structures that develop from exactly the same embryonic tissue. So when we talk about embryonic tissue, embryo, that is you know, when you are an embryo, uh, you know, the very tiny being growing in utero. So that is what an embryo is, in case that is a word that you're not familiar with. Okay, so I have a whole fun list of different ones here. And I did just mention, of course, the one that may be more common, but maybe not. Maybe you didn't know that that the penis and the clitoris are essentially the same other than other than here's some main differences so the clitoris is only function only function is pleasure and the penis has four functions so now let's just think about what does the penis do it does urination it does uh, penetration it does stimulation and what's the other one? There's so let me just think about that for a sec. I know I just got three, and I know I've got four. Ejaculation is number four. Sensation, so that's like pleasure, right? Penetration, also part of the pleasure. <laughs> Ejaculation and urination. Four jobs for a penis, one job for a clitoris. Clitoris's only job is sensation, i.e., pleasure. And the clitoris has about 8,000 nerve endings. Um, from what they understand right now, medically and whatever they've looked at scientifically. And on average, the reports come in that penises have between one-eighth and one-tenth of that. So either 1,000 or around 800 nerve endings. Now, that's that's kind of a vast difference. I get that. Like 200 nerve endings difference is a pretty vast number of nerve endings difference. But we're looking at somewhere around the 1,000 um, uh, area. So it it's pretty amazing. I want to give you guys a list of some very fun parts that you might not even realize that you have in common with everybody else of every every uh, sex, uh, um, every sex. So in embryo, there's something called an embryological precursor. And so I'm going to name the embryological precursors, and then I'll let you know what it is in the female and what it is in the male. So the embryological precursor is called the gonad. And so you might have heard of gonadotropin hormones. Those are the ones that come out of our ovaries and testes. So where do those, where, what would be the gonads for female and male? We've got the ovary and the testes. Um, 
And then there's another part that you might not be familiar with called the reti ovary and the reti testis. So those, and don't worry about those, we're getting into specifics with that. I'm just going to name them and you can uh, be aware of them. So now we've got some other ones uh, that embryologically, so the the ovaries and the testes are, are very fascinating too. I find that, um, I just want to mention this as a, as a note. Um, I have been, I study randomly a whole bunch of other things just for fun. And one of the things that I have, uh, you know, stuck my big toe in to test out the waters of is something called Germanic New Medicine. German New Medicine, because it all discusses em uh, like embryological growth and tissues and how the similarities between tissues and growth and how different conflicts um, fit in the body in different areas of different uh, tissues and different kinds of tissues, that the issues, for the most part, that would occur in um, male testes will be equivalent to the issues that occur in female ovaries. So uh, the similar conflicts will be creating those similar issues. So I find that fascinating because there is something so very cool about, to me, looking at how what's going on embryologically and how have these similarities in our body parts. I know that might sound like a really weird side note. I'm sorry if I just threw you guys for a loop with mentioning Germanic New Medicine or the GNM, but check that stuff out. It's phenomenal. Dr. Hammer was an absolute genius and um, I'm a huge fan of, of the work he did. He is no longer in body that I know of, unless he found a new one and he's popped back in. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, here's another, some of, some of the more common body parts that you'll probably be aware of. Uh, for example, um, in embryological precursor, we have the, it's called the paromesonephric duct. Don't worry about trying to memorize that. So the paromesonephric duct in females is the fallopian tubes, and in males it's the appendix testes. And then another part of the paromesonephric duct is also the uterus, the cervix, and the vagina um, parts of it. So, and in males, it's the prostatic ventricle. So, those, I think you guys are familiar with some of those, maybe. I like to not assume, but I also like to assume that maybe you are educated in these things. So then under our other, um, I'm going to give you guys some ones that I'm sure you must be aware of. Uh, let's just see. Let's, I have a whole fun list here. Let's go with uh, the labioscrotal scrotal, uh, folds. So the labioscrotal folds in the female body come out as the labia majora, and in the male body is the scrotum. And then we have the urogenital folds uh, embryonically, and in the female body we have labia minora, and in the male body we have penile skin. Isn't that cool? I think it's just so cool. So there are some other really cool parts of bodies that, for example, like during arousal, there we have these parts that will increase uh, like scent and lubrication. So in vulvas, we have some, it's at the very mouth of the vagina, this thing called, in female bodies, called the Bartolin's gland. Some people call it the Bartholin's gland. I call it the Bartolin's gland. However you want to pronounce it, I'm going to call it Bartolin's gland for today. So that gland is particularly part of lubrication and creation of scent. So uh, by scent, I mean like letting off some of those great pheromones that we give off when we're, not just when we're turned on, but at other times as well. So um, being turned on is the only isn't the only reason for lubrication, and maybe I'll do an entire show on how that's like a mis a misunderstanding that you assume that because you're wet you're turned on. That's not always the case, and it's not always the case of if you're hard as a male that you're turned on. And by the way, both male bodies and female bodies both get hard and wet. So. Female bodies, you know, you can have swelling 
of the labia majora, you can also have a clitoral, a clitoris that gets harder, right? It'll get erect. And male bodies will have pre-ejaculate and they also get an erect penis. So we're actually, we both get hard and wet. So <laughs> isn't that fun? I want a t-shirt that says, oh, we all get hard and wet. That's just hashtag, we all get hard and wet. So I think it's fun. <laughs> so so it looks like we're going to make that t-shirt. And uh, if you guys want the t-shirt of we all get hard and hashtag we all get hard and wet, um, awesome. We will have those available. I'm sure we could have them available in no time flat. If you are actually interested and you're listening on a station or a channel that you can uh, add comments to say, I want one of those, and we will contact you when we have those ready. Hard, the hard and wet t-shirt. And it'll have the logo of the Pleasure Zone on there because why not? And Inspired Choices Network too. Alrighty, moving on from the funness of the hard and wet. The hardened wets of the Bartolin's gland, and of course in males it's the Cowper's gland, or maybe not, of course, but anyway, in male bodies, the Cowper's gland um, uh, is part of what lets off pre-ejaculate. So, uh, we both get hard and wet, and that's fun, and that, that is, it's just, so, one of the things, too, that I think we we also sometimes forget is because we have all these things in common. Um, so for one thing, we do have all these body parts in common, but they're not necessarily always, they don't always um, get stimulated the same way or function the same way. So just because a clitoris might have very similar embryonic to, or sim, uh, the same embryonic tissue as a penis, it doesn't mean that it is wants to be um, stimulated the same way a penis does. And not every penis wants to be stimulated the same way, just like not every clitoris wants to be stimulated the same way. So as a lover, don't make assumptions about what your lover might want. Just play, play with them and have, what is it that I always talk about on this show? Communication. Talk to your lover and see what they like. Do, as I've met, said many times before, do show and tell because that's the greatest way to get anybody to understand what you need or like. All right. So that's a side note. So um, talking about the fun parts that we all have in common, we're going to talk more about those. We're going to head to our next commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly, other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. 
Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight we're having a fun conversation about how much all of our genitals are the same. They're just organized different. So we're having some fun discussing some similarities and some differences. Right? And for those of you who are just tuning in, uh, go back and listen, because I think you might have some fun hearing some of the commonalities that we've got, the homologous uh, traits that we have. So homologous being that um, they, they all look similar. They are, they are similar. Okay. Not that they look similar, that they are similar. Okie doke. Make, they have they basically start out embryologically the same. All right, so we're going to move on to uh, some other ones. If you're just tuning into and you haven't caught um, this show ever before, go back and check it out on Inspire Choices Network, either through one of our 400 uh, platforms that we're on. You can find us literally everywhere that you listen to your favorite podcasts. Um, as well as places like YouTube, and you can also find us on smart TVs. So, so uh, you can go back and check out my over 370 uh, shows that are available. I'm sure you're going to find something that tickles your fancy, and you'll have lots of fun learning at the same time. So on uh, in this next segment, we're going to play with some fun ones. I know that earlier I, I mentioned that the the tissue that creates both the penis and clitoris the t- those tissues are <clears throat> are, sim- are are the same embryologically and that tissue uh that embryological um, thing is called the genital tubercle tubercle so it's like the word tube was an r c l e tubercle and it creates the in females, the clitoris, the vestibular bulbs, the clitoral glands, and the clitoral crura. And in the male bodies, it creates a penis, the bulb of a penis, the glands penis, and the cruce of penis. So in, for example, intersex bodies, you might have a combination of things going on, and they may appear slightly different. So it may not look like what what you see in your standard textbook of what a body is supposed to look like. So those embryological precursors, uh, and as we develop, or to have, that Y chromosome creates the penis, and the double X chromosome will create the clitoris, and then we have a combination of things that would create variations that would show up as intersex. So I think that, you know, knowing that our bodies are the same, organized, different, that just knowing that should have an impact on the way that we treat each other. So here's my hypothesis that I wanted to share with you guys about basically about how I think the world could evolve, uh, how our thoughts could evolve. Now, this is not fact. This is a hypothesis. I want to be clear on that. So... If we all have something that's similar, um, for example, we pretty much all have fingers, right? Not everybody, but I mean, I do know people who are missing fingers, and maybe we'll go with something more evident. Well, actually, there's always going to be somebody in the world who who, uh, will be an exception to all of these rules, like not every single person will have fingers. Not every single person will have an arm. Not every single person will have an ear. Not every single person will have a penis. Not every single person will have a clitoris. And even internal organs like uteruses, even though you might have uh, what appears to be female genitals on the outside, you could be born missing a uterus. So yes, you can have things that are missing. 
or we'll call them missing, but they're not missing. If you if you don't have them, you just don't have them. There's nothing wrong with that. So my hypothesis is that if we all know that we're, we're essentially developed the same, we look at some countries where maybe there's genital mutilation going on, maybe that would stop if we all if all the people who are are performing genital mutilation stand back and go, oh, wait a second, that clitoris is, is actually embryologically, um, this, we have the same precursor embryologically, it's made of the same tissue as a penis. Would I want my penis chopped off? Would I want to become a eunuch? Answer might be no. And it might make people stop and think before they did these things. So it could have an impact if we actually understood this from a biological standpoint. Um, if we look at it, too, from the standpoint of if we're all biologically the same, would we have any of these things that are so ridiculous? Like um, my child and I were watching something the other day, and we were just laughing because the show was showing things that do not need to be gendered. And we know that gender is not the same as sex, but in this case, you know, they were trying to make them the same. It was like women's mugs. Like, why do they even have to be gendered? Um, and we're, you know, watching other things. And, and now we just have like a really good laugh and we say, see things. Cause now it's really evident <laughs> that like there is no need for this. Um, distinction, right? That you have a mug that's female or a mug that's it's a mug. It doesn't need to be um, marketed that way. I don't know. It's so weird. So if we all realize that it's basically all the same, maybe we can get over some of our uh, things that we're doing to create separation from each other, from the sexes. We can see that we're the same Organized different doesn't mean one is better than the other, does it? It's just like we might all have exactly – if you gave me a bunch of files and you gave my friend Christine a bunch of files, who's the CEO of the network, of uh, the Inspired Choices Network, if you gave us both the exactly same files, I guarantee you we would organize them very differently. Um, I know Christine would probably organize them according to dates. Um, and then even within the dates, there'd be subcategories in the dates, probably for um, different names of companies where I might go uh, in a different style, for example, like I might go companies and then dates within that, depending on where we're looking at. But I bet you that we will all, even if we all had exactly the same files, we would organize them different. Why? Because we're individuals and we do that. So if we knew this, fundamentally, we're all the same. We might do things a little differently. We just kind of get over all of that judgment of of ourselves, of each other. Wouldn't that be cool? Like, we, we might actually treat each other better. We might see each other in a new light. We might stop having these silly arguments that I, I keep on seeing these, like, really weird discussions and arguments all over social media about real men do this. Real men don't wear skirts. Uh, whoever's listening to this, if if you actually think that's true, I want you to look back at Scottish men who wear kilts and Roman warriors who wore togas. Because, and I know I've brought this up before, but this point really annoys the crap out of me when I see it all over the place and people are like, yeah, real men, blah, blah. I'm like, real men, my whatever. That is not even accurate. Go study some fashion history. Not even a lot. You don't really have to study that much fashion history. Even look at the 1700s and the real men were wearing the most audaciously huge fluffy shirts with the most awesome high heels. But if they did that now, mm, there would be, you're not a real man. So I think this is like these identities that we give people based on their genitals, what is a what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, behavior, and even freaking clothes <laughs> is so funny. And I was just thinking before this show, um, Eva was showing me this like video with this little boy who is, um, he is uh, like an amazing uh, 
tailor. He sews things all the time. He's like a designer of clothes. He's on Instagram. His name is Max. And I was looking at that and I thought, well, that's just like so interesting because we could all be given exactly the same material in life too, just like the same files. And we could sew them different, right? And our, we could also be sewn different. And, and I think of like, if our, you know, if our bodies are, it can all be different. What about if, if even, I don't know, I had, I had this thought about um, like our clothes even, like by changing a seam in your clothes, you could take a seam. I'm wearing pants right now, which would have been like, oh, so not cool in the early 1900s that if I have female genitalia, I shouldn't be wearing pants because I could get arrested for that in the early 1900s for many different reasons, probably for being a sapphist. But anyhow, um, nowadays, though, if I change the seam, if I cut the seam in my pants right up the middle and then I sewed it together and I turned that seam that looks like two legs and I turned it into a skirt and sewed it up the middle and I ended up with a skirt, that would be somehow acceptable. It's like I changed the seam and now it's acceptable. It's a freaking seam. But I think the same the same is true on bodies. Bodies have seams. A testicle is basically a, a vulva with the seam sewn. And that's, I think, where I was getting the seam idea from because I kept on thinking about like how testicles and vulvas, like the labia majora and minora, minora, if you just sewed them up, you basically have a testicle. So when you look at a testicle, you can actually see this thing that looks like a seam on it, right? If you've never looked at a testicle, have a look at a testicle. And you'll see that it basically looks like a seam. So like if we all, we're all basically just have different seams in different places. And if we looked at a shirt and went, oh, that seems out of place, like it's just a shirt with a different seam. It's not significant. Make it incredibly significant. Anyhow, my thoughts are the world would be a heck of a lot different if we could just understand this fundamental thing about biology. It's pretty simple. Can we teach this in school, guys? Everybody out there, let's take a vote. Can we actually teach this very fundamental thing biologically that these things are biologically accurate that we know of to date, um, male, female, and intersex, all valid, and they are all actually just sex parts, biological uh, parts of our bodies, all the same, organized different. And I think if you really are interested in more of this information, I think you're really going to love Come As You Are. It is such a great book. We're going to head to our next and last commercial break right now. And when we come back, I'm going to discuss a few ways for you to kind of look at your own body, know what you got, be okay with it, love your body. What can we do to do that? So we're going to do that after this next commercial. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time? for a totally different sexual evolution. Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Milica Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight we are talking about genitals, and we're talking about how essentially, embryonically, they're all the same. Embryologically. Embryonically. Embryologically. <laughs> I might be saying that word backwards and forwards all the show. 
development embryological. So we, in utero, we're all developing identically. Like we have similar tissues uh, that, are, that are there and then they're just forming in different ways. And I think one of the things that we need to know is that even within, even within our own um, sex, we'll say, uh, there is such a vast difference. I know for me personally, like I think growing up, I didn't really like I didn't really see uh, genitals other than the ones that I saw in my grandpa's textbooks, and they all had they were all diseased. And I was just really grateful that I didn't have like genital warts because, oh man, I saw some pictures growing up. I got some pictures that I think that if any kid uh, had seen what I saw in medical textbooks, you'd stay away from bodies for a really long time, just mortified at the thought you might catch any of the things I saw. Um, Syphilitic bodies, uh, gonorrhea, warts, um, herpes that have gone wild oh yeah it was and like even stuff like rotting flesh and the groin anyway who the thoughts my brain is now tapping into those memories and it's really freaking wild <laughs> you know if that's the only thing you've seen you might look at yours and go hallelujah but also if you don't have any other reference it's kind of good to have your own reference to yourself so always know your body first. I'm a huge fan of that. Um, and I think it's best to know your body first before you go looking at other bodies. It's probably better for you mentally than trying to think you need to compare it to especially your genitals. Uh, and especially if you have female genitals and you can't see them that easily, you need to get out your, you need to get out like a mirror, you know, to actually see some of these things. So do that. And maybe not. Maybe you can actually see some things. Some people have uh, clitorises that are like the size of a, a gherkin, and that is totally normal. And everything that you're seeing, as long as you don't have, say, genital warts or you have a disease or there's some kind of pus going on, as long as it's healthy, you don't have a, a really bad funk or a rot happening or, you know, herpes or... Um, Herpes is fairly treatable too, so it's not bad. It's not wrong. I'm just saying if you have those things going on, seek medical attention, whether it's a holistic practitioner or an allopathic, which would be the regular doctors. Either way, seek assistance if you have something funky going on. But I want to give you some tips on what you can do to actually get over yourself. And the number one is become friends with your genitals. And I have done many shows on becoming friends with your genitals. So if you haven't listened to them, if you need a reference, we will get those links out for some shows that are uh, references. I can send you shows as well as references. If you write to me, I'm always happy to assist listeners with uh, more shows as references for them. So get out a mirror, have a conversation. Hey there. How's it going? I don't know if you maybe you have a name for your genitals. Name them, look at them, love them, inspect them. Pull back your clitoral hood. Check it out. How big is it? What's it look like? What color is it? What do your labia look like? You know, do you think they're too big? If you do, don't worry about it. They're not. They're exactly how they should be. The only reason you should ever think there might be something wrong is if there is something that is actually medically off going on where you need medical attention, where maybe there's a cyst, you need a cyst, or maybe you have um, a growth that's like out of control, or you have something that's unhealthy, that's when you need to seek some assistance. Other than that, if you have labia that are a little long, or a labia that are a little bulky, or whatever it happens to be, you're probably normal. If you happen to have a penis that is you know, one or two inches or 12 inches, all of it's normal. It's not that it's within an average range because, you know, we like to put averages out there medically. There's averages for everything so people can feel bad about themselves. But in reality, all of it is all the same tissue. It's just organized different. Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 
6 p.m. Mountain and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.